And we're recording. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. And here's our podcast. For the realistic SLP. Who is actively anti-racist. Okay. Or actively anti-racism. There it is. There it is. Yes. So, is, this- so I'm going to repeat that so I don't mess that up. Who is actively anti-racism. Yes. yes I like that. Yeah. I, I like how that feels when I say it. Yeah, we should just say that for the next couple of episodes. This is our podcast for yeah. the Actively Against Racism SLP. Yes, I'm also hungry. So <laughs> you tell me what you're eating. I'm going to have some melon. Now. Okay, so um, I don't have wine and cheese today, but mm. what I do have is um, avocado and tomato salad and a glass of uh, kombucha. It's the Synergy Pomegranate Power. It's pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Love pomegranate. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Vote drink it. Definitely. Not even like one of those gross ones, the gross kombuchas. I feel like I got you hooked on kombucha. Just saying. I think you definitely planted it in my head because anytime I ever had it, I was like, ugh. And then I tried this one that like was a color and a fruit. Exactly. And it's good. Yeah. I'm having some colored fruit juices as well. I'm having rosé. Nice. Yes, it's officially rosé season. We are, and it's June Mm -hmm. now, so we are in the season for it. I'm drinking this. I'm also, I have, I'm double fist and Deb. I got mint, iced mint tea, fresh mint. Yes, from the backyard. And then the rosé by Eric Kent, and this is a sponsored wine, so shout out to them. Thank you so much for this delicious wine. It's very light, not overly sweet. It's perfect for right now for the weather. And then my favorite, favorite thing about this wine is this wine label. Look at this, Deb. This is oh, beautiful. fancy. That is beautiful. Yes. Very nice art. Yeah, it's like a colorful rose and just a lot of beautiful colors and uh, fantastic scenery. So, anywho... Going on with this uh, current climate that we're in, right? It's June 3rd, 2020, and right now it's a very crazy time to be living just in this world in general. So just to speed us up, Deb, you wanted to talk about the climate right now? Right, yeah. So uh, recently, so we have been sheltering in as a result of the coronavirus. Right, COVID-19. Um, yes. And... Then in conjunction with that, um, this past week, a gentleman named George Floyd was by the and this sparked a lot of political rallies and um, protests, some rioting, some looting, but mostly peaceful protests Mm -hmm. um, over the, the anger and frustration about racism in this yeah country and it's it's really it's a big issue and it should make a lot of people uncomfortable because many people have profited off of these minority groups specifically black people and it it's enough is enough already and this is what happens when you ignore an issue for so long people um they have no choice but to protest. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like it is such a tragedy that um, I watched the video of George Floyd maybe three times. You sent that to me. I couldn't barely even finish it. It was just uh, heart-wrenching. You know, it was just difficult to watch. And it's just like, I don't know, just him shouting out for his mama for me. I was like, oh my God, like in his last moments, he's like really pleading. You know, and it's yeah. like, how did this, how did this cop not see that? Or but also that? in the beginning, I just felt like he already looked so distressed um, and he didn't appear to be resisting arrest. He was just like sit, seated there on the ground or, or propped up against the wall. Um, it was just a really awful video to see. And then also at the end when people are like saying that he's not moving and the police threatened to mace the people who are trying to help him because the, and the cop never got off his neck and, and none of the EMTs or the 
police officers thought this was a problem. They just let this man keep his knee on on um another man's neck for eight minutes. And there just, were some people shouting in the video, but it wasn't enough to stop him, is what you're saying. Which, uh, I yeah, mean, no, the people, yeah. the bystanders were saying stuff. Yeah, they were saying. But the police and even the EMT, like, didn't even say, get off of his neck as soon as they arrived. Not, I don't know about as soon as they arrived, but shortly after they arrived. I oh, think. no, he never right. took his knee off George Floyd's neck until the EMT told, told them, him to. told yeah. him to two minutes later. It wasn't like the guy came out of the ambulance and was like, hey, uh, let him go. Nothing like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was doing? like completely you know, unresponsive. Response. And it's it's just so awful. So it's very we awful. want to be sure that um, that all of our listeners and friends and family and uh, followers and colleagues and clients and everyone um in our world and community know that we we stand behind we do not support institutions that have racism ingrained within them um i hear you yes and it's important to talk about yes cheers cheers (laughs) Cheers, girl i'm drinking rosé i have some olives here i have some melons Deb, I let you take the reins with that. Mm-hmm. I did want um, to briefly get into yeah. the DOE stance because I'm like, uh, I always get DOE questions slid into my DM. Mm-hmm. But the, D- you know, because they're like, what's Ash's statement? And they made a statement too. And I know like Department of Right. Education. Ash's statement really fell short. <laughs> Initially, lots of people were yes. disappointed. Then they apologized, but they didn't reissue a new statement, I don't think I yet. Think they did. I, I don't thought know. they did. I believe they did. Um, anyway, they were just oh, saying like we'll have to find it. Yes, DOE condemns police brutality. It's a brutal loss. Oh, nearly 140 cities across the country are a reflection of this anguish and this desire for a better world. So you know, this is not just in one isolated place. This is going on everywhere. And how they're saying how racism also causes a new harm in other ways because systemic woven deeply into the fabric of our institutions, our economy, and the systems that make up our shared community. That is true in New York City, as progressive and forward-thinking as we are, including in our public school systems. I thought that took, like, a lot of uh, guts to kind of admit to that. It's woven into the society, and we have to break that. Right. It's funny that you you phrase it as guts to admit, because it's just like, yeah, it's just a... a like a lie and a secret that people have been aware of and then just like have not done anything about and that's why it's important to speak up against these injustices so um first of all good point i did read some instagram posts from um accounts that mentioned they wanted to hear um so well first as white people it's not appropriate to like go to black people and ask them like tell me about your struggle and teach my children or where can I find some resources to learn more like it's not their job to teach us about the way we should treat them and how they have been treated unfairly so it's really important right now like I think Mike phrased it as it's important for white people right now to take the reins and be like okay, so this is what has been happening historically. This specific group has been suffering, and these are the ways in which we can help prevent it any mm-hmm. further. Um, so I, so that's one thing. So really first of all, like... Really communicating there. Communication. Yeah. There we go. You right. Know, so speech is everywhere, right? Yes. To have these honest conversations and these open lines of communication of what's working and what's not and what needs to be improved right and, and making what's going well maybe maybe there's stuff going well you know come on you know right what's working keep doing it right so it's important to to um inform yourself but then also not n- not feel as if people of color are supposed to be educating you you have to educate yourself or mm-hmm. and then then white people also should be a little bit should be more active in their own education and then the education of other white people. So 
that's what we are going to try to do in terms of social media and on this show. Um, okay. So f- another thing that I saw was a bunch of people posted about how they would like to see um, some non-black people post about this issue without about racism, without beginning and ending um, story with a police killing black people because that's not the only issue um the the issue historically is that we have institutional or systematic racism which is much less overt and more subtle um it's defined as the collective failure of assist of an organization to provide an appropriate and professional service to people because of their color culture or ethnic origin. It can be seen as seen or detected in the processes, attitudes, and behavior which amount to discrimination through prejudice, ignorance, thoughtlessness, thoughtlessness, and racist stereotyping, which disadvantage minority ethnic groups. So basically, lots of people will say um, that white privilege doesn't exist. But it does because even if you had a difficult life as a white person, it wasn't the result of your skin color that made it that way. And that's the difference here. It's that people, with one detail about them, their skin color, is what caused um, one or multiple uh, tragic events in their life. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read a lot of reports like a doc... uh black doctor was saying like the minute I take off the lab coat I'm just back to being like Mm -hmm. you know someone who's black so right and it's a struggle and it's and it's only because of his skin color and that's what makes it systematic and her Her skin skin color color. um Mm -hmm. so for example and these are examples from wikipedia so they get graphic um Mm -hmm. when a white terrorist like credible source it's still a good example. It makes I mean, sense. I'm just sitting here eating some fruit and you're educating me and I'm really Okay, so this. listen and quit cutting I me am. off. I have a client in 15 minutes. Go right ahead. <laughs> so, thanks. Okay, so when a white terrorist bombs a black church and kills five black children, that's an act of individual racism because it is um, targeted, right? Mm-hmm. But when in that same city, Birmingham, Alabama, 500 black babies die each year because of the lack of proper food, shelter, and medical facilities, and thousands more are destroyed and maimed physically, emotionally, and intellectually because of the conditions of poverty and discrimination in the black community, that is a function of institutional racism. Right. Right. So I definitely see the difference. Yeah, there's a big difference there, and that's more subtle, and people can pretend that it's not real, but when in actuality, um, it all stems back from to the Jim Crow laws. Do you know what the Jim Crow laws are? I do. I okay. remember learning about those in high school. Right. So Jim Crow laws, um, they were state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. And they were enacted in the late 19th and early 20th century. Um, And they were enforced until 1965. And what they stated was that facilities for African Americans and Native Americans were consistently inferior and underfunded um, compared to facilities for white Americans. Sometimes there were no facilities for people of color. Mm -hmm. So these Jim Crow laws had... they were basically segregation laws as a body of law jim crow institutionalized economic educational and social disadvantages for african americans and other people of color living in the south so lots of people so we had the civil war which ended slavery and then these jim crow laws came in and although um we could the or they still treated uh, black people unfairly by putting these laws on them. Right. And then now, even though those laws have were only in, were they were no longer enforced after 1965, um, there are still other laws that came into act that 
are like similar to the new Jim Crow laws, which is mass incarceration in the age of colorblindness by Michelle Alexander, a book. And then Maria, you wanted to talk a little bit about how the United States is obsessed with incarceration. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was listening to a TED talk, which is in the show notes, and it was uh, the title is The U.S. is Addicted to Incarceration. That's because nearly half of a million people in the U.S. are in jail right now because they couldn't pay the money to make bail. Yeah. So we have that. Um, you stay Which is in insane because they could have they could have stole a backpack. Right. Or, or they or could have. Right. Yeah. And they're in jail for that. And they're all locked up. Right. And, and it's date. just because. Yeah. And they Correct. can't make bail. And they, so Mike told me a story about someone who was in jail for three years for a minor crime just because they couldn't make bail. That's so crazy. And then, yeah. like, even the talk was saying, like, okay, three years, that's a lot. But let's say if it is just, like, temporary, if someone wants to make that argument, like, all right, whatever, it's just 24 hours in jail, let's say, right? right? If someone wants to use that argument. But in those 24 hours, you could be victimized, traumatized, you could lose your job, you could lose your family, like, you know, your child, and that 24 hours can totally just ruin your life. So it's, yeah. it's just a terrible argument to use. So it's exactly. just one of the one of many ways how our justice system is unjust and there are a lot of things that need to change. And this is just a big one right now. Right. It's, you know, one of the main points during the protests and everything going on that how unfair the justice system is. Exactly. And then also, so back in the 90s more, um, okay. Mike older. has told me this, so I'm like, the, I'm thinking about how the way he phrased it. So basically, there were so many politicians that got, um, they got elected because they had this platform of being tough on crime. So they were going to eliminate crime from the, the big cities. And, Mayor Giuliani. Yes. Rudy and Giuliani. They, and also Bill Clinton was like, had this tough on crime um, mindset. So But basically, these were new laws that specifically targeted uh, people of color, specifically black men. And so lots of individuals, they got harsh punishments for minor violations and anything. And once you became a felon, once you had a felony on your record, you would lose all your rights, like of owning a home or getting a job or getting a loan. Um, it's a way to legally discriminate against people. And um, it was specifically a, a, several black people were the target of these laws. And this is an, a lot of nonviolent drug crimes are felonies. And these people had to do significant time. They could have been stuck in jail or, or they got this felony on their record so even if they weren't in jail they didn't have much of an opportunity to succeed in life otherwise correct um yeah well said well said so the new jim crow is a a book that i think that save it to the end again but i would say read that book it's a available on audio book too Mm. the war on drugs yeah. So it's, yeah, mass incarceration in the age of colorblindness. Wow. So yeah. we wanted to talk about police brutality as well, right? Yeah. So there's too many. So, so in conjunction, so we have their systematic racism um, or institutional racism, which is Correct. the subtle version, which prevents people from having uh, rights based on their skin color. Um, then there's more um, ov- like overt and clear racism, which is um, the historic problem in the United States with police brutality. And there are far too many people to name. So we only have a few listed. Um, Maria, how about you? Walter talk Scott. About- yeah, Walter April Scott. 4th, 2015 in South Carolina following a daytime traffic stop for a non-functioning brake light, Betty Jones. I'm just going to quickly go through. That was a settlement. Well, hold on. So wait, hold on. I want to, so these are the people who were, here are some specific names. So Walter Scott, like, like Maria mentioned, and Betty Jones 
these are two individuals in 2015 who were fatally shot by police, um, although they were unarmed. Uh, like Maria mentioned, Betty Jones did end in a settlement, mm -hmm. but you'll see moving down, there are many police officers who did not, um, who were not found guilty and were not charged for mm -hmm. these murders. Um, on yes. July 6, 2016, Falanjo uh, Castile, a 32-year-old African-American man, was stopped while driving and fatally shot by a police officer in Minnesota. The police officer was found non -gu not guilty eventually. Um, many people saw this video when the police officer shot the man and he was his girlfriend claims that police had opened fire on Castile reached for his when he reached for his driver's license. Um, he reached for, oh so sorry so Mike's correcting me so he had a firearm on him and he said I have one on me I'm gonna put it on the dashboard and then the police officer shot him when he went mm. to do that so he did the right thing he said he had it and he was trying to do the protocol and then he was shot so oh. even if people do the correct thing, they still can be yeah. harmed and that's racism. So, so if this had happened, so that that's the difference between right, what, right. everything that I'm saying, right, right, white privilege yeah. and racism. Right. Okay. So on September 6, 2018, an off-duty Dallas police uh, officer, Amber Guy Geiger from Dallas, Texas, she shot her neighbor, who was a 26-year-old accountant, both in Jean, fatally killed him. She said that she thought she walked into her apartment, but instead she walked into his, and she shot him because she was scared that he was a um, burglar. Yes, I remember. And her, her apartment was on a whole nother floor. Um, at yes. Tiana Jefferson, 28-year-old woman shot and killed in her home by an officer in Fort Worth, Fort Worth Texas. Um, when her neighbor called just for a non-emergency saying that her door was open, mm -hmm. she was shot as well. and killed yeah. by police. Saw that video. That was awful. Yeah. Like, he was just like the police or he, I don't even think he identified himself. I think he just, Oh, that, like, that's not him. that. That one is not that one. That's not 26 year old woman. She was fatally shot by, uh, Louisville Metro police in her sleep so mm. they so this is hard to say but apparently the judge gave a no knock warrant which meant that the police officers didn't have to knock and they didn't have to identify themselves but his her boyfriend pulled his gun out and then the police um shot her and killed her in her bed wow Eric island um, mm -hmm. that was July 17th, 2014, the NYPD officer, um, said that he accused him of s selling cigarettes and, um, went to arrest him. And then he, uh, refused to be arrested. And then the police officer put him in a chokehold. And then he was, he, he said, I can't breathe 11 times while lying face down on the sidewalk and eventually died. Then we have Sandra Bland, who was 18, a 28 year old African-American woman who was found hanged in her jail cell in Walter County, Texas on July 13, 2015, three days after being arrested during a uh, traffic stop. And her death was ruled a suicide, oh but God. it just seems highly unlikely. And like we mentioned, we can't, uh, we don't, there's too many people. We don't have enough time to say everyone's name, but all of these memories are important. It's important to say these people's names and, and fight for something and use your voice for good and mm -hmm. change the world because another person should not have to experience what the family of Tamir Rice did on November 22nd, 2014, when Tamir Rice, a 12 year old boy was fatally murdered in Cleveland, Ohio by a 26 year old police officer. Rice was carrying a replica toy air gun and the police officer shot him almost immediately after arriving on the scene. So he showed up, yeah. saw a kid with a gun, gun. shot him. Mm -hmm. He was 12 yeah. years old and it was a toy. Yeah. That's and if that makes you mad, then it 
good. It should. And that's what's happening in the world right now. People mm-hmm. are using their voices and they're saying that's not okay. And right. this can't continue. Full, like just to uh, space it up to speed of uh, George Floyd's death, right? Mm-hmm. Which was the catalyst, I think, to all the riots, which was just like the straw that broke the camel's back of everything. But yeah, so we just wanted to bring it to the present day right now. Right. And um, we'll have future episodes with um, more tips on how we can talk about race within our speech therapy sessions and um, also how you can increase diversity in your life. If it's just the social media yeah. that you take in, we'll have some you more You want to go to tips and tricks? You want to give one yeah. quick tip? I have one ready if you want to. Yeah. So my tip, second. like I mentioned earlier, would just be to look into the new Jim Crow and try to read that and then try to follow some black comedians on Instagram and Twitter and also check out Cornell West. Um, Mike had some videos on and he's got a lot of great things to say and that's it. You don't have to, that's not really, that's, I just naturally watch comedians, you know, but Hey, if that's like homework, you know, well, (laughs) well, yeah, but like specifically, yeah, but I think it's good to specifically, um, like follow because maybe right now you're not following a ton of black comedians. So I posted a list of, uh, accounts that I recommended that lots of people, these are comedians that I know and like, and they'll give you awesome. Yeah. A good perspective. I'm taking a different route for a tip or trick. And I was Mm -hmm. thinking more in terms of like therapy <laughs> but um i've been uh working on asking how my children how the kids feel at the beginning of the session and i have visuals for it of course mm-hmm. and usually i like kind of didn't talk about feelings with like kindergartners or like even um, preschoolers who are like minimally verbal but that's okay they could like point to pictures yeah you no know? and i've been like pleasantly surprised with some of their answers and even <gasps> mom was like um I was like, are you happy today? And I was like, mom, can you try that again? And just like show all the options and the kid picked tired. I was like, all right, you know, he's tired. So yeah, now we went into the session like, wow, he pointed to tired. You know, he's I've never heard him say tired. I'm sure he knows the word clearly when he saw it in the picture. Right. Something about that picture caused him to point to it. So he was like, I relate to that face. I relate to that face. (laughs) That's that's the face I'm feeling. Mom wants to face. Yeah. Mom wants me to say happy, but maybe I'm not feeling happy right now. I'm feeling tired. Yeah. You know, so just starting that, um, like I was mentioning before about that communication, just starting at a younger age and emotions, a more complex topic at a younger age too. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at how they can pick it up. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'm just speaking from experience, you know? Yeah. But um, do we have a quote? <laughs> um, well, I saw... Oh, there was a quote in your letter that I liked. A in lot that... Letter. Something that it was like... I you a letter? <laughs> no, the, letter? the DOE letter that you posted. Oh, I thought gosh, I had a good okay. quote. It, it was like, um, not much... We can't change everything we face, but we can't, Mm. nothing that we don't face won't change. Hold on. Oh, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing, ready, hold on, ready? Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. That was actually (laughs) very good. Good eye, Deb. Good eye, Deb. That was a good quote. Yes. So face, um, oh, you wrote this too. I, these I points you stuff. forgot. I you forgot these points, points that I like. I forgot some points that what, I wrote. What can educators do? Read your blue stuff. Yes, I'm going to read my blue stuff because I got a blue <laughs> shirt on. <laughs> so these go. are some ideas that I have of ed- what we could do as educators, um, being aware of our own biases. Mm-hmm. I heard this from a professional development. I didn't get to go to it, but uh, they turned key information to me and said that we have to be aware of our own biases as educators. So take some time to think about that. Teach our students to self-advocate and advocate for each other. So um, even like early on, teaching kids to ask for help, mm-hmm. um, teaching kids, if I guess if they see someone being bullied, how they can. Right. You Don't know, be a bystander. Yeah. To how they can interrupt that. You do work on these in like your speech therapy rooms and social scripts. and Right. You know, and That's a pragmatic activity yeah. you could just do you know ally and uh standby definitely um, yeah ally and standby and the bully and they could turn yeah. take and character motifs and get crazy uh, with it you know 
write it, write your script yeah. out on visuals, get the AAC involved, stop, go, tell me more. Maria just plans a month of your sessions. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You got a word, you get a book about it, you get books about bullying, right. you do a whole segment, a whole segment, whole lesson on the books. Yeah. You know, you make you get, now we're going on over a month. I'm we on gotta, a roll. I'm yeah. Roll. We'll take you through the whole school year with this. There you go. Yeah, you could. You really could. And that really would could. that would really require you to be aware of your own bias. You'd have to be like, hmm, what materials do I have that could facilitate this instruction? Are all of the people white in my books or all of my babies white? Or do I have yeah. diversity on my bookshelf and in my toy box? So yeah. that's just one way that you can be aware of your own bias. You might think, oh, like, I think black people are cool. I have lots of black friends and I like many black artists. But yeah. do you? We have, yeah, we have a black like toy soldier and he like broke his leg. And we're like, all right, he's he's like he's missing a limb now. <laughs> so we yeah. kept him right yeah <laughs> and you, then I, yeah so there yeah. he is you know but yeah. um anyway and then also the third tip is to focus on emotions from a younger age which i just mentioned as one of my tips and this is something personally i was like oh they're too young i'm not gonna work on emotions if we can't even identify action words and i uh, disagree with myself my past self I think that's a, that's an area of, that's a growth. Cause like, Thank if you, you can even like, Thank first you, you should disagree with your past self, right? Cause your future self should learn. Yes. And then also to be able to be like, you know what? I thought that, but I, I think something else now is this yeah. a pretty big thing. I do think something else now I used to think not to work on emotions at a young age. I was a higher complex skill and mm -hmm. you could put it google feelings charts there's so many good ones out there i'll actually just attach the i'll put it on our patreon feelings chart check oh, it great. out yeah yes I maria and i are going to start making boom cards for our patrons so yes. listen out for that and check out patreon so that you can get those uh monthly boom cards from yes. us um yeah and okay. then i think i said my points but once again it's important to talk about both subtle and overt racism. It's important to be actively anti-racist. It's racism. It is not enough to be not racist. Um, you have to be actively anti-racist. So fight against it. Use your voice. Increase the diversity in your life. And it's important to be uncomfortable because many people in their life, they are uncomfortable because of the color of their skin, because of the way they are treated as a result of the color of their skin. So it's not okay for if it, I saw lots of people post like, choose joy and hate doesn't beat hate. And I'm like, that is such a privileged thing to say. There are many people who cannot just close their eyes and hum and choose joy. Someone can bust into their house and shoot them. You know, like this, it's a big, it's a, it's a big difference. And you are, you are demonstrating your prep, your privilege by just trying to not acknowledge these mm. people struggle and it just, I'm off my soapbox. I'm done. But, but yeah. All right. No better, do better, everyone. <laughs> yes. No, so true. So true, Deb. And, you know, I totally hear what you're saying. And then I want to just speak because, like, I'm usually like that too. Like, I'm usually like, you know, center yourself and stuff. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot going on right now. And that's the reality. So it's a fine line. You know, you got to still right. like live your life and try to get right. through you it. You have and, to and, work. You yeah, have to function. Right. So like, I think centering yourself so you can get your reports down is fine. And I'm not somebody like, I like, yeah. I think meditation is good. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause I don't know if you're referring to me as that joy person, but I don't think you were. Cause I didn't post any. Of no, you, that you I did not did. post that. If no, you would have posted not. that, I would have, <laughs> no, I would no, I just, just cause it usually is me, but this one time, right. it's actually not, you know? So I just, but like, you knew this was not the right this time. Is not the right time. That's this not the not, right time to choose right time, joy. Guys. I will tell you when the right time time is it's just not right now it's not the right time no you know? um and yeah so i'm not trying to say that like you should never take care of yourself i'm just right, saying right. that there are many people who no matter what they do they can't separate themselves and it's really unfair to just post that in a time when people are putting like pouring their hearts out and mm -hmm. and like don't don't you know flaunt your privilege in that time right right now is not That's the all. time you got to Think about how you could channel that privilege in a helpful way to exactly. help others. Channel that. Exactly. So, yes. But um, th 
this has been another episode of SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Maria. And I'm Deb. And thank you so much for tuning into our show. See you Bye. next week. Bye.